I think the question on everybody's mind after the performance we saw by the president last night is uh, what happens next? There's no way they're going to let this guy run. I mean, he was not there. Uh, he could barely make a full sentence. But, you know, the crazy thing about that is I see all the liberal news media sites that are talking about that right now for the first time ever. Uh, something I never thought I would say. CNN did a good job. They did a much better job than Fox News did in the uh, last debate. And so now they're all saying this. Sounds like there's something funny going on here because let's say something, guys. Yes, what Biden did, it was a horrible performance, but we've been seeing that for like 16 years since he first came on the scene with Obama. And here in the last several years, it just continues to get worse. And when people try to say something, there's always something to make it look like, oh, they're, they're disinformation. No, it's not. The guy sucks. Okay. And let me say something before we go into this. I will call out both sides and I will make sure you know that by the end of this. Um, but there's, there's certain things that you can't dispute. Okay. And I think what made this debate different than any other debate that we've ever seen is uh, he can sit there and talk about how Trump's going to be the end of our country. He's a wannabe dictator. He's going to take us to World War III and everything. We've lived under him. We know what it was like under him. So you can sit here and predict Armageddon, but at the same time, we remember what it was like. And I have to ask myself as an American citizen that's growing up with my children and my grandchildren and their grandchildren will live here. So I am responsible in this generation for making sure I make the right choice to take care of them. Was I better four years ago than I am now? Oh, boy, was I. Gas was half of what it is right now. Groceries are ridiculous, guys. Ridiculous. And they say one of the biggest things that's going to be said is, well, the president does not predict gas prices. Well, OK, let's throw a Republican president in there, too. George Bush. He was awful, 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 awful. He was as bad as Joe Biden. He could talk a little bit better, not much better, but he was awful. George Bush, Obama, Biden, when in the last 20 years, when we had those presidents, gas prices were high. They were almost the same throughout. The only time that changed was during Donald Trump. Donald Trump, we had record low gas prices. I remember going back in the grocery store, seeing like, two liters of Coke and Pepsi for 99 cent again and seeing prices that I haven't seen really guys since the early two thousands or the end of the nineties. And I was like, maybe there is a way to get this country back on track. The one thing I did not like during the Trump presidency, and this could be more towards, you know, just general society than it is towards the man was the polarization. I hate that everybody is always clashing. And I think more than the president, what we've got to blame for that is the people, social media. Do you see the way that people talk to each other online? It's absolutely despicable. But we have just gotten to this boiling point where uh, we blame one or the other, these little two parties for all the problems that's going on. Let me say something. Both parties have their problems. If you think the Republicans are any better than the Democrats, you've got another thing coming. Let me tell you, there's a lot of those Republicans that are Democrats. I actually align with what the Republican Party stands for. Do I believe in half of the Republicans that are in there? Absolutely not. The one thing that I do think makes DJT different is you can't say the guy is bought and paid for. You can try but he's just not an establishment candidate. He didn't need politics to make his money. And I know there's people that say he was a bad businessman and everything. Oh, God, he went bankrupt. Guess who else went bankrupt? Sam Walton, Jordan Walmart. Would you say that Walmart was not a successful company? The guy did really good with his life. He's taken off time in these later years that he could be sitting back on vacation, which I think he hit that home really good last night. But Again, I just didn't like the polarization. I've gotten to meet Trump a couple of times. I've seen him. He's one of the best speakers out there. And I, I honestly believe he believes and stands by what he says, unlike a lot of these other candidates. And what resonates with him is middle America. You know, they've used this whole race conversation 
to just completely cancel out Trump. And you know what? It might have worked for a little bit, but it's still got to the point. It's like, look, man, a lot of that race that you're trying to say that he's racist against all these different people, they're in middle America, too. They've seen their pocketbook hurting. They've seen what it costs for gas. You know, me as a father with a family, a married man, I can tell you just to go to McDonald's is like 50 or 60 bucks. And that's if I order cheaply. What is going on? You know, at the same time, economy was good with Trump. Hmm. He had to put up with COVID. I would not have wanted to be in his shoes at the same time. People sitting home for six months or a year drawing unemployment. That was the reason that a lot of people uh, didn't go back to work. That was the reason why a lot of the inflation happened. And I'm going to tell you, he was a big proponent of that vaccine. He never got credit for it when the Democrats were praising that, you know, they made this vaccine and it was actually under his administration. But I don't really believe in that vaccine. So there are some things to be criticized. But on the back end, am I better right now than I was four years ago? Absolutely not. You know, one of the people that I really took a liking to was RFK. I don't agree with the guy on everything. I don't agree with any of them on everything. But the one thing neither of the big two we're talking about right now is the polarization and how we need the healing of our country right now. Guys, I never would have thought we would have had an open border. I want you to go back to September 11th, 2001. I'll never forget where I was, what I was doing when my father came and got me and said, son, you need to come in here and look at the TV. History is happening. And I watched as the second plane hit that tower. I saw for that next year just how patriotic our country was. We didn't care if you was Republican or Democrat. You just attacked the United States of America, the best country in the world. We locked arms. We were all coming together. Patriotic. Wanting to salute our flag. And then just fast forward 20 years later, and it's like, what sort of dystopia are we living in right now? After watching those planes hit that tower, we have open borders with people coming in. You never could have told me back in 2001 that this would have been happening. I don't think anybody would have believed you. Do we realize how dangerous this has gotten? The weirdest thing that I don't remember as much growing up, I know it was there, but not like this, is you've got certain issues, whether it's abortion, immigration, economy, electric cars, climate change. And it's like this party stands for this. This party stands for this. So when you go and you vote, like which one? I honestly believe wholeheartedly this country would be better with no political parties. They should get rid of them because inside of both parties, you have what is called lobbyists and they have tons of money to make sure they can donate to that candidate because they know their interests will be protected. Now, we look at some of these other countries that's got the cartels where they traffic cocaine or marijuana and some of that other stuff. It's kind of despicable, right? We are the same thing here in the United States, but ours is known as Big Pharma. We even push ads for it on our TV. And you know what? They have more influence on politicians than just about any lobbyist out there. There is so many problems with our politics, and I believe it all starts with the money. I'll end up getting off track. The name of this video is What Will They Do Next? I'm going to tell you, Biden looked pitiful last night. There's points in times that you see the guy. He can barely hold his head up. He can barely get his sentence out. He did everything in his power. He did what people expected Trump to do. He called Trump names, hoping Trump was just going to lose his control because that's what people wanted to see. He's erratic. Uh, he can't control himself. But Biden called him names. He cussed several times, and it didn't really face Trump. Trump did some smirks and stuff like that. But, guys, it was horrible. Last night, we beat Medicare, right? Uh, there was people that got raped by their Brothers and sisters, that was some of the words that he was, he didn't even know what he was saying. One of the funniest moments during the whole debate is, uh, I don't know what he said, and I don't even think he knew what he said. And everybody else that was watching in the on the TV was thinking this same exact thing. If you saw that, and then you go afterwards, and you see the CNNs and the MSNBCs and the ABCs, people that would typically be taken up for Biden uh, saying just how horrible this was, what comes next? I think there is one of two options, and uh, both of them scared me greatly. Uh, Michelle Obama, 
I, I think that would be the, the secret weapon in, in the Democrats' playbook, Michelle Obama or Gavin Newsom. At this point in time, they have to know if it goes forward with Joe Biden, you're looking at a Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan type of election because nobody wants to live in the country that we are living in right now. The sad thing is, even with living with this inflation and all this other stuff, and the only thing they can do is try to paint this portrayal of this racist guy, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th. I am so tired of hearing about January 6th. What happened on January 6th? Yes, it was despicable. It should not have happened. There are some things that don't look right. I'm not exactly sure who was responsible for what, but there is another part of that conversation that never seems to get brought up. I was living then. I was in the country. I remember what it was like. The four years leading up to January 6th, we sat back, Middle America did, as we watched cities across this nation being set on fire, businesses being looted, windows being broken, and it was not the America that I remember growing up. We sat there, we saw it all the time. Protests, violent protests, Antifa, going around doing this stuff all the time. And then the one time this happens January 6th with the conservatives. Oh my God, it's all you've heard about ever since. Why are you not disavowing the cities that were burning for the past three, four years? That's what takes away the credibility from your voice. If you want to demonize this, why in the world didn't you do it with this? I think both of them were bad, but you only hear one side of the conversation. That's because they have a portrayal to paint. And you know what? I think what you saw that day was middle America saying, we know we didn't vote in the guy that you saw on that debate stage. I mean, guys, where I live, okay, it was one of the very few places that Biden campaigned last time. And I'm in the middle of nowhere, Georgia. It was five minutes away from my house where I got married the year before, and I couldn't believe Joe Biden came there. I went there. I wanted to talk to him. I'll talk to either side. Uh, my program talks about something that I think is the most important thing out there, making sure fathers get back in the home and they have equal rights to their children because they need it. And let me tell you something. Most of the politicians are attorneys and they make these laws and they're the reasons I think the men aren't in the home. You'll see a lot of them talking about the fatherless issue, but let me stop there because I'll go in a completely different direction. If you want to hear me talk about that, I'll do it some more later. But anyway, I showed up because I just wanted a second with the guy to say, what are you going to do about it? Man, guys, he had maybe 50 people show up. I was there. He was surrounded by Trump supporters. I mean, there was people going down the road flying Trump flags. And then as Joe Biden was coming out, I've got video of this. You can try to say it's fake. I've got video of this when it happened, when he pulled out because they wouldn't let any media in there. I tried. It was the uh, the big meeting where uh, the campaign where they all had to stand inside of the circles because of the social distancing. Right. And as he was coming out, they were playing. The devil went down to Georgia. Like a week or two after that, um, Donald Trump came and spoke in Rome, Georgia. And I was going to go to that, too, because I wanted to see if I could get to him there. I heard, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I know how the fact checkers and stuff are. But I heard there was like 30,000 people inside of that airplane hangar uh, there in Rome. And I'm going to tell you, it was so packed, guys, that I said I would never go to another one. Not because I didn't enjoy it. But because you couldn't get in a bathroom, you couldn't do anything. I mean, if, if you would have raised your arms, you couldn't have got your arms back down. That's how many people there were. But that's what was being reported that was inside of there. What the news and nobody was showing you is there was like three to four times that amount of people outside that couldn't get in. It was a madhouse. You couldn't call anybody on the cell phone. There was just too many people there. Um, and it was rough. I mean, but... You're telling me this guy that couldn't even bring out hardly anybody just beat that? Something was very weird about it. Something about it didn't match up. We watched on the election now when we went to sleep that night, it went from here to here. And so I believe many Americans who's had to pay the consequences, which is living under this administration, wanted some answers for what happened then. The 
answer or the solution, the January 6th thing, no, that was the wrong thing to do. At the same time, I've seen some videos. And the sad thing is our nation is so polarized that we can't sit down like civilized people and say, who the hell is responsible for this, right? Um, we're in a mess, guys. We're in a mess. And I can tell you one thing. You know, is there things that I wish Trump was better on? Sometimes I wish he would shut the hell up. <laughs> Not because I don't agree with what he's saying, but it, it's hard to watch the way he's doing it because we know you might be telling the truth. We know you can do the job. But the way you do it sometimes, maybe it's not a bully. You Some would say bully. It's just like, dude, come on. You could carry yourself a little bit better. I'm going to tell you, I was so excited about Barack Obama getting into office years ago, and I have never been more disappointed in my life. The only thing I can brag about during the Obama administration was he was a great speaker. He carried himself well. He carried himself presidential. Outside of that, I, I really have to search and think because a lot of the – polarization of this nation that's about when it started and uh you know one thing i'm seeing also that doesn't get talked about as much is these people that are constantly throwing out racism are some of the biggest racists out there because they use race in everything they can't make points they've got this preconceived notion that this person is just as racist or this and then anything outside of that facts research it doesn't come into play and it's just, you know, I think we're at a point in time in our nation when you start hurting my pocketbook, when I can't, you know, hardly afford to go from point A to point B to go to my job, even though you say, uh, you know, we're going to double your salary. Man, it's money is going nowhere right now. Our nation is in a mess. People are tired of it. They're, they're not buying into the rhetoric, guys. And my fear is that this DNC is going to. Is Newsom or Michelle? If they could get Michelle, it would be Michelle. You know, and it's going to be a lot of same. I, I, I tell you another thing, like used to uh, deliver to schools and stuff all the time, and they would give me the school lunches. Did you see what she did to school lunches? It's horrible. Most of the kids just throw it away. That would be one of the first things that needs to be addressed. Trump, why don't you address that if you get back in office? You know, I don't know. I don't know, guys, but I, I think that's it. I just there, I, there is no way forward with uh, Joe Biden. There's not. And I think the reason, you know, connect the dots. Are you used to seeing the media telling the truth about his performance? I mean, he's been doing this for several years. And every time somebody tried to point out uh, the shape that Joe was in, it became disinformation or doctored up video. Well, it was live last night. Nobody doctored up that video, and it was one of the worst performances ever. You can't use that excuse anymore. Like, what are you going to say now? I, But now all of a sudden they're willing to call it out. That's because there's, there's a plan about to take place. I think they needed to show them. Uh, there's no chance here, and uh, you're going to have to step down, and we got somebody ready to replace you. And let me tell you something about that establishment right there. They're evil. They're very, very evil. They've already got their, they've mapped out 10 steps ahead of this. I actually think this was part of a plan. There is no way on the face of God's green earth that they thought he was going to go on stage last night and stand toe to toe with Donald Trump. Love him or hate the guy. Donald Trump is one of the best debaters that we have ever seen. You can call him the worst president or whatever, you know, and that's that's what's so sad is usually when you hear that it's the media that's constantly saying this stuff. But that doesn't resonate with middle America that came up d during those four years and was paying that gas and the groceries, seeing the stock market. I mean, that was the best it had been, you know, since the Clinton years, really not saying that Bill Clinton was the greatest president, but our, our country had a decent economy back then uh, now. You know, and then they talk about the debt. You know, the truth is, I don't care who's president now. I think we're so far gone with that debt. 
that I don't know that there's much we can do. Any president that goes in there right now, that debt's going to continue to climb because we're that far gone. And we're that far gone because we've gotten politicians in here that don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. And people blindly follow these people just because they've been told that's what to do. And we keep putting in these morons who over the past several decades have sold us out to put money in their pockets. Tell me how somebody that's only supposed to make two hundred or four hundred thousand dollars a year leaves office after a four year term with tens of millions of dollars, guys. Something doesn't add up. Get the money out of politics. Take political parties out. You need to be voting on somebody based on what they stand, not because who they are aligned with. That's the kind of crap that's getting us in this mess. If we could do that, we could heal this country. But until that happens and you keep doing this two party system, we're going to be screwed. You don't have to agree with me, but I am going to speak my voice. Okay. Watch. I think there'll be a replacement soon. We'll have to wait and see what happens.